So this next section I call thresholds. This is any area in your property where you're moving from one space to another. And the most important ones where that happens are in and out of your house or in and off of the street. So doorways, driveways, those sorts of areas would be called thresholds. And if we look at an example of a threshold, here would be a doorway um, where they've got some nice columns and a little bit of landing space here. And building code requires that there's a certain amount of room in between a doorway and the first step. So you would want to have at least three, four feet in here. So the larger the doorway entry area, it's actually nicer if that space gets a little bit larger because you can see it even, even here it is a little bit tight. And it's about balance, how the whole thing looks together. So there's a meanness that happens when landings are a little bit too small. And we find that particularly in older homes where um, sometimes in the 50s we made really small landings, just a, as efficient as we could be with all of our spaces. So you walk inside the door to your house and there really isn't much room before the closet happens. That's, a, that's what I mean by a little bit of meanness. It's kind of like just being really, really tight. So what we'll watch for is allowing for space within the design that we can move freely and comfortably in and out of our thresholds. So I have a few other examples. This would be moving from one area of the yard to another. So in this case, we have uh, an arbor in front of a gate. So this says, I'm moving from the backyard into the side yard. And it has a nice sense of entrance and, and you know that you're moving in and out of a, a different area. Sometimes people use arbors in, in uh, a little bit of a funny way. And in this case, it's, it's more of a decoration than it is a, a, a doorway or a threshold. So, so this one is a little bit misplaced and has a rose bush in the middle. So it's kind of hard to use it as a doorway anyway. And this would be an example of what I mean by the meanness of the, of the entryway. It just feels a little bit small in comparison to the whole size of the yard. This arbor does, does do something interesting that it gives something out here on the lawn that has a bit of presence to it and some height to it, but it's uh, definitely not a doorway in that case. So this would be an example of moving from a front yard with some stepping stones into a gateway. So this is a threshold area where you're changing materials of walkway, you're walking through a fence line. Here was a, a threshold that happened right at the base of the, somebody's front stairs that was going up to their house. There was a little side garden in here. So rather than just having the whole um, garden feel part of the front yard, there was a, an arbor put in. And you can see, even though it says welcome on it, it does say, you're entering a different space. And so it causes you to pause and say, am I invited into this space? Am I welcome here? Uh, so a welcome sign doesn't always say, come on in, especially if the doorway feels a little bit tighter. So as this doorway would get wider, it would feel more like you could walk in there without too much permission. But as it stands, it feels like kind of a little private garden. Here would be another example from the back of the property moving into the garden space, the, the more uh, close to the yard people space, I guess you would say. So in this case, there is a threshold right here where we're walking across a bit of concrete curbing and some flat stepping stones. So this kind of feels like the old sense of the word threshold where it's, it's like there's a threshing stone in the doorway area and it's like that's where um, some threshing would have happened. So, so this is uh, indicative a little bit of that. But it has a nice sense of, of presence with the wrought iron above it and the vines growing up. It has a, a lovely character. So our 
modern houses can be a little bit interesting in that from the street you don't always see the front door. So an arbor can uh, act as a threshold to go from public space, I call it, into a more private, come on into my entrance courtyard area sort of feeling. So that can be a, a nice tool to use to say uh, door. It says door, but not actually being your front door. And sometimes thresholds can be quite magical looking. This was on an acreage property where between the main yard and some outside space heading over to barnyards and things, there was this area where they had used caragana uh, branches and they had bent them over to create this a bit of a tunnel. So you can see there's depth to this threshold. So it's like you're entering another space and that's one of those liminal spaces you might call it. It's like where are you when you're in the middle of this space? It feels kind of kind of interesting and and it has a lot of life to it. It's like your your whole body feels something as you move into this space and then again as you move beyond it. So that's something to consider is that arbors don't necessarily have to be really shallow. They can be something that has some depth. I used this one time along a, a side yard of a house where the whole side yard had a long arbor over top of it and vines were growing up. So you'd walk the whole side of the house through an arbor. It was really beautiful. So if we look at thresholds, it could be as simple as a change in materials from the, the city concrete sidewalk onto some paving stones. So there is a threshold here and I'm sure you can feel it if you walk down a neighborhood that wasn't yours or you didn't know the neighbor um, and you were standing here, it would feel if you stepped across this, this line right here, you would be knowing that you were on a threshold of, of going into some place that isn't maybe having full permission, that sort of idea. And then this space itself is like a landing and then coming up these stairs, you can feel that's definitely a threshold to your changing elevation here, as well as moving further into that space of, of unknown or are you invited kind of thing. And the last example I have would be, sometimes there doesn't have to be an actual arbor or formal gate it can just have a post so this little winding wall coming through here over to a post there's a gap of grass and then on the other side was was the house and then it's it's wide open into here but you could definitely feel that this would be a threshold going from the front yard into that back side yard and and even in the distance here you can feel that a bridge going into a gazebo area would be another threshold. And we've all had the experience of playing Billy Goat Gruff uh, over a bridge and asking for permission to pass. Bridges are one of those magical places too where it's like, yeah, you're definitely going from one area to another. And while you're on that bridge, it, it feels, your whole body feels like you're, you're in a place of in between. So if we look at your base plan area, what we're going to do is unroll a piece of trace paper that will be the same size as, as your base plan. So you can see you can just unroll it. And we'll make a little mark here and we'll just rip it off. And what I would like you to do is to tape it on somewhat straight. Probably have to do it in a couple of places. So now you have the opportunity to mark on where the thresholds might be on your property. So in this case, 
we're definitely going to say the front door is a threshold. And there's a bit of threshold right here where the city sidewalk is. And there's another threshold somewhere here where the street is. And then moving into the back, there's going to be a threshold around the back door and a threshold where the garage door is. And then vehicles actually have a really large threshold. So you can see that that whole back area needs to be open for a vehicle to move. And there is a reason why our gardens feel a little bit out of scale these days. And part of it is because the threshold for driveways is so big and our properties are actually so small. So normally, if we think back to when properties were a little bit more spacious or just even thinking to an acreage, there are lots of uh, there is a lot of room for a vehicle to move through. So the vehicle has its own presence and its own traffic pattern coming in and out. So what happens in this case where the, where the, the door, the human door and the vehicle door are so close together, there isn't a lot of room to create that, that sense of uh, grace or spaciousness around the doorway for the people. And that again, you might call a little bit of meanness. It's like, it's just so hard to make it feel lovely and, and beautiful. So there are ways that we can work around it, but it's, it's often about being aware of the fact that there re really isn't a lot of space. And we will find that in front yards where the garage is attached to the front and we're moving from a driveway space to the front door. Again, it's, it's very tight. It's out of scale, and you'll remember when we talked earlier about scale in the base plan course, it's that there is just a, a, a proportion that is out of whack. So the houses are too close together um, and they don't have that sense of flow around them. However, there still is a sense of flow. And what we do once we've got the basic thresholds laid out is we're going to mark on how people might move through the space. And here would be an example of moving to the front entrance. And there is room to flow around to the back. And we might move, show this coming to the back door. And we're going to show it. And you'll notice how I kind of flow around the basement windows a little bit with my line. There's a lilac here, so I'm going to bring this in. We're not as likely to walk around the lilac to the door. So it has to have um, some realistic movement to it. And then to get from this threshold to the garage door, we're going to come out and do a little bit of a curve. So that is how our property is flowing at the moment. Once you have that, you can move your trace paper to behind the drawing. Attach it.
There we go. So that might take a little bit of fiddling to get it lined up again. But once you have it lined up, you can see faintly underneath of the drawing where we've, we'll, uh, we've colored some threshold areas and some flow areas. So this will remind us as we're going on to the next steps about where those are without being too strong on the plan. Because as we start to move more things onto the drawing during the design process, our flow is going to adjust a little bit. But this will definitely help us to remember we walk here. We're not uh, going to sit there necessarily right in the middle of the walkway. It's like putting your chair out into the street on a, on a smaller scale, but that's how it feels. If, if we had put some furniture in between this door and this door, it's going to feel like it's blocking, it's in the way. And we will even see that inside our homes when people will turn a dining room uh, window into a patio door thinking it's a great idea so that you can move right out onto the deck from the dining room. What they sometimes find is that it's not used that much because the, the door um, from the kitchen into the dining room and then out the patio door actually the flow goes through the furniture so it's, it's not actually that comfortable or intuitive to put it that way. So I thought we should talk a little bit more about how you can make a threshold interesting while we're on this topic. What I would suggest is that we think about what is the experience of, of the threshold. So if we talked about it has to be a certain size, it's like can you can you decorate it in, in such a way that there are Room, there's room here, for example, for the rubber boots that go tucked in here. And, and I always love the story about the village shaman. You would know if the shaman was home if his or her walking stick was, was sitting beside the door. And if it wasn't, you would know they were somewhere else and you would just keep going because you knew they weren't there. So part of what makes the threshold lovely too is, is having a bit of a roof line over top. And this would be yet another example of meanness is where we don't have any shelter over top of the front door or the back door. It's just like a straight wall going up and you're trying to fumble with your keys and, and uh, your groceries and all that sort of thing. And if it's raining, you're out there in the elements trying to get in and out of that space. So it, it has a sense of being not really a lovely experience. So another thing that could happen if, if this threshold were a little bigger, there could be um, maybe the pillar moves out a little bit and there could be a nice chair or a bench that, that sits in this space. And so these steps could easily move out this direction in between these walls. So that would be an example of what I would say is a, is a nice threshold where there's room to have uh, a bench or a chair there for you to put your groceries down while you're while you're fiddling with the locks or um, or leave your muddy boots outside or have a nice um, a nice wreath or something on the door it, it's about creating a sense of grace in that in that small space and um, if you read things like uh, the books from Christopher Alexander who's a famous architect he will say that part of the magic here is that this space is six feet and it might be six feet that way but six feet seems to be a magic number where you can actually do a couple of things that makes the space feel like it has some life and most of us four seems to be what it is builders tend to just use the minimum because people are very cost conscious so it's going to be well let's just do it um, four feet wide and some of you may have seen some of the homes from, I think it was in the 70s, where there was a bay window along the front of the house. And they put a, a little bit of, it sort of looks like a front porch, but in some cases it's only four feet wide. So it's not wide enough to put uh, a couple of chairs out there comfortably because you need space to move around the chairs in order to get to them. So they tend to be very just decorative. And those spaces you will see as you drive through the neighborhoods have very little life in them. It's like, it's hard to create some beauty when the space is too tight. So if you have a choice and you're coming in and out of your, out of your doorways, think about that space as not being big enough to put a patio table and chairs, 
but big enough that you could put a chair and a pair of boots or a nice pot full of flowers and and make it into its own space that that you enjoy coming home to.